The U.S. military takes pride in protecting its own. That's why military families we met in Hawaii told us they feel so betrayed. Two years ago, there was a fuel spill close to the drinking water system at the Pearl Harbor base in Hawaii. Navy leadership assured thousands of military families that the tap water was safe. But nearly two weeks after the spill, parents learned the truth. The water they drank or used to bathe their kids contained jet fuel. Tonight, you'll hear from some of the families who say the jet fuel tainted water made them sick. But first, we'll go to where the water crisis at Pearl Harbor began. The story will continue in a moment. From the air, the historic naval base is easy to spot. Eight miles from Honolulu, sparkling blue waters host battle gray ships and memorials to those killed by Japan's surprise attack in 1941. What you can't see is the one secret storage site that provided fuel for the Pacific Fleet and its planes for 80 years. It doesn't look like much from the outside. Wait till you get inside. Vice Admiral John Wade led us through the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility. Seven miles of tunnels cut through volcanic rock built to hold 250 million gallons of fuel. So this is one of the tanks. Oh my gosh. That black hole is a steel-lined fuel tank so deep, it's hard to see the bottom 20 stories below. To just show you how enormous this is, this tank holds 12.5 million gallons. And to give you kind of a reference point, the Statue of Liberty, not the base, but the statue itself, can fit in here with enough room. And this is just one of the 20 tanks hidden here. This is the Arizona, writhing in death agony. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, construction was already underway to protect the Navy's fuel reserves from an aerial attack. The decision was made to embark on a Herculean task to build a bulk storage fuel facility inside a mountain mm -hmm. in secrecy. And how long did that take to do? It was a little less than three years. At its peak, there are about 4,000 men working here. Now watch your head, we're gonna go this way. But this testament to American resolve became a monumental liability after this. That's jet fuel spraying from a cracked pipe. The video was recorded by a worker inside Red Hill on November 20th of 2021. The fuel, 20,000 gallons of it, was trapped in a plastic pipe. The weight caused the pipe to sag. This trolley hit it and jet fuel spewed for 21 hours, close to the well that supplied drinking water for 93,000 people on and around the base at Pearl Harbor. According to Navy investigators, the workers who responded didn't have the right tools to contain the spill. They also assumed there was no danger to the drinking water. They were wrong. At least 5,000 gallons of jet fuel drained into the tunnel floor and into the Navy water system. The next day, the Navy issued a press release about the incident and told the 8,400 families living in military housing the water remained safe to drink, even though the Navy had not tested the water yet. A week later, residents began to notice a problem. When did you get the sense that there was something wrong with the water? My husband came into the kitchen and washed his hands and said, gosh, the water smells like I just did an oil change, like the water smells weird. Brittany Traeger lived on base, about two and a half miles from Red Hill, with her daughter and husband, who is a Navy chief petty officer. Traeger says she began to feel sick a week after the spill. I had a cough. My tonsils were very swollen. I remember a very distinct moment where I was walking to the car and I had vertigo so bad that I had to hold on to the car. The smell was that overwhelming? Mm -hmm. In an email to residents nine days after the spill, the commanding officer of the base reassured residents, there are no immediate indications that the water is not safe. My staff and I are drinking the water. Did you stop using water? Did you stop taking baths? So I did, my daughter did. Just because you had a bad feeling, not because anybody told you to. Correct. They gave us an email address that we could send an email to if we wanted to have our water tested. So I emailed those people who then emailed me a phone number that I should call, and I called that phone number for days, and it was just busy. They were overwhelmed. 
and inundated with reports. Ten days after the spill, there were more than 200 reports from six neighborhoods across the base of strong fuel odor coming from kitchen and bathroom faucets. But the Navy said its initial tests did not detect fuel. It defied logic, you know, even though there was a leak and even though our water smelled like jet fuel and even though there was sheen on it, they continued to say the tests are coming back negative. After 12 days and four statements assuring residents the water was not contaminated with fuel, the Navy reversed course. On December 2nd, 2021, it announced more comprehensive tests conducted by the Navy had detected jet fuel in the water. Three weeks after the spill, tests from Hawaii's Department of Health revealed jet fuel levels 350 times higher than what the state considers safe. Rochelle Dietz lives on base with her husband, a Navy chief petty officer, and their two children. Jet fuel's not something that you would even think could happen to be in your water. How were people reacting to the news? I was so sick to my stomach from that news that I actually threw up when I heard. Because why? Because my kids had just been poisoned. Within a month, the Navy set up medical tents for residents. Some complained of stomach problems, severe fatigue, and coughing. The military moved more than 4,000 families to hotels. Small studies of military personnel suggest jet fuel exposure can lead to neurological and breathing problems. But the long-term impact of ingesting jet fuel is unknown because it's so unlikely to ever happen. Rochelle Dietz told us days after the spill, her daughter's tonsils became inflamed and her son started suffering from chronic headaches. I can hear people saying, tonsils, headaches, kids get that stuff. How do you know it's related? Um, because they never had it before November of 2021. It wasn't a, an issue. It's unclear how many got sick, but of 2,000 people who responded to a survey by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 850 sought medical care. The water system was flushed over three months and bottled water brought in. Brittany Traeger said her four-year-old now suffers respiratory problems, which require hour-long treatments at least two times a day. That includes a nebulizer and this vibrating vest to clear her lungs. Tell me about your daughter's health. 13 days after the contamination, after our water smelled like jet fuel, my daughter woke up in the hotel with a cough. And it pretty much never went away. Three months passed before Pearl Harbor's drinking water was deemed safe again. The Navy's own investigation into the spill described, quote, cascading failures and revealed poor training, supervision, and ineffective leadership at Red Hill that fell unacceptably short of Navy standards. For the last 10 years, Hawaiians have raised concerns about the threat from smaller leaks at Red Hill. The primary water supply for the city of Honolulu is 100 feet below the Navy complex. In March of 2022, the Secretary of Defense ordered Red Hill permanently closed. Vice Admiral John Wade was brought in to get the 104 million gallons of fuel out of the tanks and move it safely to sites around the Pacific. We got to defuel, that's the imminent threat. There's ongoing and will be continued long-term environmental remediation to restore the aquifer, the land and surrounding area, and then there's also a medical component for those that have been impacted. You view now this thing that was a lifeline for the fleet mm -hmm. is a threat. That's right, that's right. In six months, Wade's team in Hawaii successfully removed almost all of the fuel. But it took two years before the Navy issued disciplinary letters to 14 officers involved in the spill response, including five admirals. Was anyone fired because of this? At the time that the accountability came through, uh, we had officers that had already retired, and so uh, they had already separated from service. Meredith Berger is an assistant secretary of the Navy. We met her at the Pentagon in November. She told us the Navy has been accountable. 
We're talking about 20,000 gallons of fuel leak, 90,000 people had their water contaminated. It looks like people retired or were reassigned and no one was fired. How is that accountability? It's accountability within the system that we have established. And we have heard that this was too long um, and that maybe it didn't go far enough. 2,000 military families agree the Navy didn't go far enough and are suing the government. The Traegers and Dietzes have joined the lawsuit, alleging they were harmed by negligence at Red Hill. Are you angry that it happened, or are you angry at what happened after? It's a little bit of anger, but it's also this feeling of betrayal. What do you mean betrayal? So my husband has been in for almost 18 years. We have moved our family cross country, cross oceans. We gave so much of our life to the Navy for them to ignore warnings. And then we were directly and blatantly lied to about it. Navy leadership has apologized for the spill, but has not said that the contaminated water is the cause of the ongoing illnesses. The Navy did set up a clinic on base to collect data and treat anyone who believes they have health issues related to the tainted water. What happens in five or 10 or 15 years? Will those services still be available to these families? So that is that is part of why um, we are making sure that we're collecting that information to inform future actions and what the requirements are for those types of uh, needs and care. That doesn't sound like a guarantee of care in the future. And I want to be careful because I don't do the health care part of things, and so I, I don't want to speak outside of, um, of, of where I have any authority or decision. So we followed up with the Defense Department, which told us it's reviewing the question of long-term health care for military families, including more than 3,100 children. Two years after the spill, some residents have reported water with a smell or sheen. The Navy is conducting daily tests at Pearl Harbor and says it is confident there is no fuel in the tap water. Rochelle Dietz is still using bottled water. The lawsuit she joined with Brittany Traeger and the other military families is scheduled to go to trial tomorrow. What is the remedy that you want? In our family, it's restoring my faith in our nation. That's a big thing to say. There's a body of government that failed. They contaminated our water, they lied to us, they did not protect us, and they did not intervene. And accountability looks like a lifelong care plan for me, my family, and the people affected. And that will restore my faith in my nation. Does Red Hill still pose a threat to Honolulu? This facility was a disaster waiting to happen. At 60MinutesOvertime.com.